okay next we'll see the petrous part of the temporal bone okay so it is the most important part of the bone and if you see see this is the petrous part of the temporal bone okay so this is the right side uh, temporal bone and uh, here you can see the right side petrous part of the temporal bone if you see the shape it is somewhat pyramidal in shape okay so it is a pyramidal shaped uh, the bone that is a petrous part and it contains within the petrous part contains the labyrinth of the internal ear and also you can see the air filled cavity that is the middle ear cavity or the tympanic cavity and also uh, the bony part within the petrous part also you can see the bony part of the auditory tube okay so these are the things you are going to see in the petrous part of the tem I mean, uh, within the petrous part of the temporal bone okay now if you see the petrous part when it is as it is the pyramidal in shape it has got one base so this part of the petrous part we call it as the base of the uh, petrous part and it is having an apex this is the apex of the petrous part and it has got three surfaces and three borders the three surfaces are this is the anterior surface and this is the posterior surface and uh, here you will have the inferior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone see this is the inferior surface okay so this is don't get confused with the tympanic plate see the tympanic plate is present within the mandibular fossa i mean it forms the mandibular fossa okay so except other than this okay so this much part what you are seeing this is the petrous part so what i was telling it is pyramidal in shape it is pyramidal in shape it has got one base and it is having apex and anterior surface posterior surface and the inferior surface and it has got three borders so this forms the anterior border and this forms the superior border and here it is the posterior border clear so that is about the introduction about the petrous part of the temporal bone now if you see the the base of the petrous part okay so this base will merge with the inner surface of the okay this is the base of the petrous part so this base will merge with the squamous part of the temporal bone and even the mastoid part see this is the mastoid part alle right. so the base of the petrous part it will be attached or it will merge with the squamous part of the temporal bone and also with the mastoid part of the temporal bone clear now if you see the apex see this is the pointed end that is the apex of the petrous part see this apex it presents or if you see in the in the skull see this is the petrous part of the temporal bone this forms the apex okay on right side and this forms the base of the petrous part so the apex if you see it project or it is directed forward and medially okay it project or it is directed forward and medially and it forms the posterolateral boundary of the foramen lacerum okay so lacerated okay so this is the foramen lacerum okay so you have already seen in the cranial cavity and even in the norma basalis so this is the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone see this is the apex of the petrous part so this forms the posterolateral boundary of the foramen lacerum and also you can see the anterior opening of the carotid canal see this is the anterior opening of the carotid canal so that also you can see along the uh, the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone okay so two features so that what is the direction of the apex it is directed forward and medially okay now the this apex forms the posterolateral boundary of the foramen lacerum and also you can see the opening of the carotid canal into the cranial cavity it uh, transmit the internal carotid artery clear now this tip of the apex okay now the tip of the apex is connected with the dorsum cellae okay of the sphenoid bone this is your this butterfly shaped bone that is your sphenoid bone okay now this uh, this uh, sphenoid bone has got this is called as the cella tarsica consists of tuberculum cellae hypophyseal fossa and the dorsum cellae okay now this apex tip of the apex is connected to the the 
dorsum cell of the sphenoid bone by the petrosphenoid ligament. Okay, by the petrosphenoid ligament. That's all about the apex. Clear? So, you should know the direction of the apex and it forms the posterolateral boundary of foramen lacerum and also you can see the anterior opening of the carotid canal and one ligament will connect the apex of the uh, petrous part of the temporal bone to the dorsum cellae that is your petrosphenoid ligament that's all about the apex and the base next we'll move on to the surfaces if you see the surfaces see this is the superior surface okay so we'll see uh, sorry uh, anterior surface this is the anterior surface see the direction anterior surface it is directed in front okay so it is directed in front and it also forms the part of the middle cranial fossa see this is the anterior cranial fossa middle cranial fossa and this forms the posterior cranial fossa okay now this anterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone forms the floor of the middle cranial fossa it also forms the part of the floor of the middle cranial fossa now what all the features you can see only this surface okay only this surface what all the features you can see we'll see so the first one it is the trigeminal impression okay so can you see see it extends from here till here okay so that is about the anterior surface so what all the features you can see can you see one small depression here okay on both the side that is called as the trigeminal impression okay this trigeminal impression it is a shallow fossa okay it is a shallow fossa close to the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone and it lies posterolateral to the foramen lacerum and here you can see the lodgement of the trigeminal ganglion that is your fifth cranial nerve okay sensory ganglion of the fifth cranial nerve it is present within a pouch of dura mater that is called as cavum trigeminal or you can call meckel's cave okay meckel's cave all the uh, within the cavum trigeminal you can see the trigeminal ganglion that's how this impression is produced clear that is the first feature on the anterior surface of the petrous part of the temporal bone next if you move towards lateral okay so further behind the uh, this trigeminal impression there is an elevated area okay there is an elevated area we call it as arcuate eminence see this elevated area first it was one depression see now you can see clearly see in this see this is the depression now you can see one elevation so that is the arcuate eminence okay both the side this is the depression and you can see one eminence that is called as the arcuate eminence this arcuate eminence it forms the the roof of the internal acoustic see this is the internal acoustic meatus so it forms the roof of the internal acoustic meatus now this arcuate eminence it is produced by the upturned bulging of the anterior semicircular canal okay so the arcuate eminence it is produced it forms the roof for the internal acoustic meatus okay and it is how it is produced it is produced by the anterior semicircular canal okay or you can say superior semicircular canal and it also forms the vestibule of bony labyrinth of the internal ear you should know how this arcuate eminence is produced what is present deep to it you can see the anterior semicircular canal okay next if you move further towards laterally okay so that part we call it as this whole thing we call the tegmen tympani now what is tegmen tympani it is a thin plate of bone you have already heard in the squamous part right this tegmen tympani okay we'll see later now this whole part we call it as the tegmen tympani okay now what is this tegmen tympani it is a thin plate of the bone which cover the or which forms the rest of the anterior surface of the petrous part okay so it forms a common roof for the mastoid antrum and also for the middle ear and also the uh, this what is that bony part of the auditory tube so the tegmen tympani which forms a common roof 
okay which forms the common roof for the mastoid and drum it is within the mastoid process you have the mastoid air cells right mastoid and drum so it forms the uh, roof for the mastoid and drum the tympani cavity and also the bony part of the auditory tube clear now uh, this tegment tympani presents two foramen okay so the tegment tympani it is very minute one it is very difficult to see so <coughs> see actually it is present over here very minute one okay so here see this is the over the roof of the tegment you can see some small minute foramen okay so this tegment tympani presents two foramina that are lateral and the medial one okay for each it is a it has got a faint groove also it's not very prominent groove it has got very uh, faint groove see here i can show you one foramen so this is man made and uh, see you can see one foramen over here okay so that is one foramen and another one it is present deep to that it is very very minute okay so this is the one foramen and deep to that another one is there okay so <coughs> this tegment tympani uh, it has got the two foramen okay these two foramen are medial and the lateral one and uh, this lateral foramen transmit the lesser petrosal nerve okay lateral lesser the lateral foramen transmit the lesser petrosal nerve that is from the 